Bicycling is a remarkably efficient form of transportation in terms of miles covered per calories burned. That is, right up until you have to go uphill. For the first 50 years, the solution to that problem was obvious. You got off the bike and you walked up the hill. Engineers have tried various ways that are foolproof and intuitive so that you can have one gear on the level and one gear going up the hill. The simplest answer is called the flip-flop hub. Simply take the wheel off in one direction, flip it around, and put it on in the other direction. Of course, you have to get off the bike to do this. And then, of course, there's the problem with chain grease. A variant of this had both gears on the same side, but of course you still had to get off the bike to change gears, and there was still the problem of chain grease. Here's an ingenious design. This 1907 French bicycle has two gears. One faces forward, the other faces backwards. To access the bigger gear, you simply pedal backwards. It takes a little while to get used to, but it actually works pretty well. But the real breakthrough was the three-speed Sturmey Archer hub. For over 50 years, this was the standard to which all others were compared. The principle behind the internal hub is that of a central sun gear surrounded by orbiting planet gears. These can be configured in several different ways to give you a direct one-to-one -one drive, a gear up four to three drive, or a gear down three to four drive. The British were convinced that internal hubs were better than external gears. They thought that the angle chain line required by external gears would create more friction. The French and Italians pursued external gears. The truth lay somewhere in between the two. That's why they coexisted for 50 years. Early external gears had, you guessed it, three speeds, although getting from one to the other could be a challenge. At first, riders had to reach down with their hand to move the chain from one gear to the next, which could be a recipe for losing fingers. A chain tensioner, located somewhere on the bottom of the bike, kept the chain on the bike most of the time. Meanwhile, assorted hooks and cages were devised to move the chain from one gear to the next, with varying degrees of success. Here's an interesting idea. This design requires the rider to loosen up the rear wheel with one lever while riding and then use the other lever to change gears. But this one never really caught on. By the 1940s, the chain tensioner, now a primitive derailleur, had moved to its current position at the back of the bike. In 1949, Tullio Campagnolo introduced the Grand Sport, a derailleur that quickly gained market share for its reliability and durability. To this day, Campagnolo components are admired for their beauty and craftsmanship. By the 1960s, rear derailleurs had five speeds and front derailleurs had two, which gave derailleur bikes 10 speeds, a real advantage compared with hub bikes. In an effort to compete, Sturmey Archer introduced the five-speed hub, with three speeds on one side and two on the other, but it was never quite as reliable as the three-speed hub. This marked the end of the reign of the hub bike and the beginning of the reign of the derailleur bike. Meanwhile, rear derailleurs went from five speeds to six to seven to eight to nine to ten to eleven speeds, and front derailleurs went from two to three. Companies battled it out for supremacy. Until the end, there were only three players standing. Japan's Shimano had the lion's share of both the road bike and the mountain bike market. Italy's Campagnolo had a small but loyal following of high-end road bike users. And American upstart SRAM continued to dazzle with some brilliant technical innovations. Their latest innovation, called ETAP, 
borrows from Ferrari's Formula One program. Ferrari uses paddle shifters, one on the right to shift up and one on the left to shift down. SRAM uses a similar interface. The latest shifters from Shimano, Campagnolo, and SRAM are controlled electronically and are amazingly accurate, like this SRAM ETAP. It's not quite the same as driving a Ferrari, but it's close. Where does the future of cycling lie? Well, for starters, don't count the internal hub as dead quite yet. Both Shimano and SRAM have seven-speed internal hubs, and the German company Roloff has an incredible 14-speed internal hub, which might just be the most complicated mechanism ever put in a bicycle. Carbon fiber belts are a clean and attractive option for non-derailleur bikes, and Fallbrook Technologies' New Vinci hub is the first automatic transmission for bicycles. It has an input shaft, an output shaft, and revolving planetary gears. It works especially well with electric e-bikes. Just pick a cadence and it will do the rest. One thing for sure, with today's technology, there's no excuse for walking your bike up the hill.